Hey, what's up everybody? Starting, growing, and scaling a real estate investing portfolio of your dreams. In order to be successful in this game of real estate, you need to have two things. You need to have the fortitude to stick it out long term, and you need to have access to the capital. In this video upcoming, there's a five part video series that I'm here to share with you. And it covers both of these two success factors in detail. So I hope you enjoy this interview with one of my early mentors and make sure you check out all five segments. Enjoy. Hey everybody, Russell Westcott. How you doing today? Man, did I thoroughly enjoy this upcoming interview with Mr. Arlen Dahl. Now, Arlen invited me out to his ranch, to what he calls his man cave, and holy moly, just wait till you get a check out. I hope we, we're gonna cut in some shots. I took some shots of it, some pan videos, things like that. So, hope you get a chance to just check out this man cave. What an ultimate place to go and just get away and get some thinking and just uh, you know just reflect on life and just maybe have just an environment that sets you up for success now many of you have probably if you've been watching a presentation or if you heard my story you've heard about this thing called this cassette tape when this cassette tape came in the mail it literally changed the trajectory that I was going on and many different things in my life what I tried to do in this interview was I actually tried to um, to mirror, to actually just recreate that cassette tape on a live video format. So I actually talked to Arlen, I asked him a whole bunch of questions. I wanted to just give Arlen some gratitude and just share how grateful I was and how grateful the community is for all the in inspiration he has provided to us for many, many years. He's been behind the scenes. He just, you know, something that he did, you know, 15 years ago is now causing ripple effects going forward and, uh, on, on a national basis. You know, if it wasn't for Arlen putting together that little presentation and that cassette tape, it wouldn't have led to a book. It wouldn't have led to a home study program. It wouldn't have led to this Raising Capital Academy that's being put together. So I'm just uh, so touched that Arlen has uh, been a part of the journey, who's been uh, an unbelievable mentor to me and to thousands across the country. So in this interview, the best part about this, there were so many, like honestly, you're gonna come back to this interview so many times, you're gonna take so many notes. The best part that I thoroughly enjoyed was just, you know, just connecting with Arlen and just being able to show my, gra my gratitude. The other thing was we talked into all these, uh, you know, objections on, you know, what if an investment partner says this? What if someone says that and Arlen is just so down to earth and just to the point right it's just amazing that how he just handles those things and you know what and how he handles them you know they'll never pop up again so I thoroughly think you're going to enjoy this interview because I had a blast you know I was sitting in the background and I'm as I'm doing it I'm just having this great big smile on my face I'm trying not to just be so giddy and just so excited because this was just pure gold so I think you're going to just thoroughly love this one make sure you give everybody a uh, you know, some feedback wherever you're watching this pop in some feedback below and can't wait to talk to you at the very end all right guys bye for now All right, welcome back everybody. Russell Westcott here. Arlen Dolan, good to see you. you good betcha. to see you. Thank you for the invitation here. We're, uh, I don't even know how to describe this place. This is just, well, first of all, uh, we have a visitor here. Hopefully we can get that, <laughs> keep that in the shot. Do you have a name for, do you name for No, I don't actually. <laughs> we actually have our own audience here, don't we? <laughs> yeah. What would you? How would you best describe this? this we're, we're, this isn't your home. This, no. is, this, is, this is your lifestyle, your play property almost. How would you describe this place where we are today? Well, I guess you'd say it's like my man cave. It's yeah. a very big man cave, but uh, and what it is is something for friends and family to come out to, and yeah. uh, and for my kids and stuff. It's there's quad trails, there's this, there's that. We've got all the skidoos and quads and machines and stuff, and we can stay overnight here. It's just. It's just yeah. a recreation place. Well, how many, how, what's the size? You have a, how many acres did you say you had? It's 160 acres. 160 acres. And I got about 10, 15 kilometers of trails out here. Right, and yeah. we're in a Quonset. Now, for, for those of you, if you're from the prairies, you know what a Quonset is. This is no Quonset. <laughs> this is, this is a, it is a, a truly a man cave with toys and a poker area and ping pong. And where we are right now is actually a living quarters. You can actually yeah. stay out here if you've, you know, had too many adult beverages one one yeah. Saturday night and don't want to drive home. So this is the this is the plan for you're gonna have the house on here eventually, right? Yeah, the plan is when the kids are gone, yeah. we'll probably build a house in here, and uh, this is where my wife and I'll stay. We're 
outdoorsy people. Yeah. So this is where you just come to get away. And it's, it's almost like, you know, people have, some people have cabins at the lake. This is how far from your house? Half this, an hour? It's not even that. It's probably 20 minutes from my house. That's yeah. what's nice because we can yeah. actually use it a lot. Yeah. So, so we're, we're in a very inspired place <laughs> to have this conversation today. Yeah. So, so this is the second part of the conversation. We had, it's, it's shocking how fast time goes by. We had that last conversation about seven months ago. Yeah. So. And we made a commitment to have the second one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are, it's uh, seven months later, we're having the second one. So I, I'm just honored for you to take the time. I know how busy you are and how much is on the go, especially summer when you got lots of property. There's, yeah. always, something to, there's always something to cut, yeah. isn't there? Uh, we're going to have a really cool conversation about raising capital, which is the commitment we had from our last conversation. We told a lot more of the backstory and, and a lot of inspiration about real estate and how you got started and just the trials and tribulations. And we've had some fantastic feedback. Just as an FYI, it's very inspirational for people to watch. But today we're going to take a little bit more dive into your capital raising and some of the things you've learned, what you've did wrong, what you've done right, and what would you do today? And you are doing, you are raising capital today. You just shared a, a story with me that. You you're meeting a guy today. Yeah. So, so we're gonna we're gonna have a, a really cool conversation. But before we do that, I actually wanted I'm I'm interested, and I'm sure a lot of people that are following this would be interested. We know the story about how you got started in real estate. Right. What's the story behind that? Who was Arlen Dolan? Where did you grow up? What kind of a you know what did you what were your interests as a kid? Did you have any you know challenging times or what, what's the what's the real backstory of Arlen before real estate? BR, if you will. Yeah. Well, I guess for me, I grew up uh, in Camrose, Alberta, which is about 45 minutes south of uh, Edmonton. So that's just a smaller town, about population of 15,000. I grew up there. I grew up uh, being a regular kid, going to school. Uh, I was really heavy into hockey, played mm -hmm. hockey. And then uh, I, once I graduated high school, I spent a couple of years working and figured out, mm -hmm. you know, without going back to school, that wasn't a lot of fun, these type of jobs. So, What was the highest level of hockey that you ended up playing? Uh, midget, yeah. midget rep hockey. Yeah. 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 Well, you were a goaltender, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, something like, there's something about goaltenders that they're just one, they're just a little off center sometimes. That's what they say, right? I should have never been a goaltender. <laughs> My personality was not set for a goaltender. <laughs> I wasn't easy going. I'm more type A and hard on myself, yeah. 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 So then um, after working a couple of years, I, I, I figured out that, that kind of work is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I went back to, went, moved to Edmonton and uh, went back to school, got a marketing education. And uh, from there, I worked, worked built some corporate jobs in marketing and sales. Um, and then I, I went into sales, sales management, branch yeah. management. And then in that process is while I did that, I started my real estate. Yeah. So for X amount of years, I did both, and then it got to the point where I could leave my job and do real estate full time. Yeah, and you, you uh, would you agree that your sales training has probably been one of the more beneficial things that you've had as a skill set that you've learned in order to help you with within real estate? I think I had two key skill sets, I guess you'd say, and one it would be definitely is sales. I mean, yeah. and sales is not what most people think yes. sales is. They yeah. th they think sales is a is you're good at conning somebody into something. That's not what sales is. Sales yeah. is helping people, whether it's purchasing or making decisions, making the, the best decision for them. That's what yeah. sales is, yeah. informing them. The second thing for me, I think, is just honestly, is my family and upbringing in that, like I just grew up learning to be honest, learning to care for people. Yeah. And between those two, yeah. those are, so I was blessed with those two things prior to real estate, which, which really made a big difference. Yeah, so how you show up, who you are as a person, yes. and truly, if you could uh, summarize it, what you just said is providing a real solution to a real problem based upon what that person is looking for. And all you're doing is you're offering a recommendation based upon what they told you, they're, uh, told you what they're looking for. Absolutely. No it's sales not, involved at all. No, it's not. And, and I mean, I've had people, honestly, that they were looking to invest with me that I didn't think that was their best choice to do mm -hmm. for various reasons. And yeah. I will say that. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're here to do the best for people that you can. That's in the long run. That's where you'll do your best and right. feel your best. Nice. Well, that's, I think that's a fantastic. So any, any big revelations of uh, uh, epiphany moments from growing up? Or was it a pretty, pretty typical prairie town uh, bringing up and upbringing, that kind of fun stuff? 
Yeah, you could say my upbringing is your typical redneck Alberta. Just, uh, you know, you're hockey and then, of course, you're young. You're, you're going to the bush parties and all that kind yeah. of stuff, just like everybody else growing up, you know. So, yeah. Man, just imagine if your folks had this place when you were uh, when you were in high school. The parties you could have oh out my. here. I'm already thinking of that. I mean, <laughs> my oldest is 14 and I'm going, there's going to have to be cameras here because with that... Well, I could turn 16 or 18, it could get way out of hand. Hey, what's, your, what's your oldest son's name? Chase. Chase. Chase is going to be the, the best friend to all the buddies. Absolutely. Because he's going to, he has the, you know, I know where we grew up, we had a, we had the party places out in small town Saskatchewan, and yeah. it truly was a bush. Yeah. He went there, Absolutely. And, and the party started with the guy with the oldest pickup truck going and knocking over a tree. And then you started the fire from that tree that was knocked uh, over. So absolutely, <laughs> I was the same thing. Same thing. So, so that's uh, sorry for our, our, rec, our redneck prairie upbringing <laughs> yeah, coming exactly. through here. I, I'm on I'm on a tour back out to see my folks in Saskatchewan, so I'm actually reminiscing through all this kind of yeah. stuff too. But, but I, I tell you what, the, how you grow up it does impact what, how you become as an adult. Absolutely. Yeah, and and those experiences of getting out and going, you know, going frogging and getting outside and snowmobiling and, and you know, just, uh, a resiliency about, you know, it's not cold out, it's just, you just put on more clothing absolutely. and you just get out and just do it, yep, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we didn't have, and I'm sorry for sounding really old, <laughs> but we didn't have gadgets and no. Xboxes and no. we had Clico, we had Clico head-to-head -head hockey, yeah, right? I remember, yeah, I remember <laughs> that. electronic quarterback. Yeah. So I guess we're showing our ages here. Yeah. <laughs> so talking about uh, raising capital, so we could reminisce about redneck-isms all day if we want, so... <laughs> yeah. But uh, getting back to raising capital, one of the first conversations I always have with a lot of my experts is the talk about fear. Um, fear, and one of the biggest fears I keep talking when I talk about people is the fear of having a conversation with somebody about money. Sometimes there's just some taboo about uh, money conversations with other people that you don't want to bring up, which, you know, this, that, or the other, or be, you know, boast or show off, or what, I don't know what it is, the fear is. But did you ever have a fear of talking to somebody else about uh, money and then also about the fear about having them invest with you? Uh, no, I actually, it's surprisingly enough, I never had the fear. And yeah. I think the reason why is because I, right to the core, believed in real estate. Mm -hmm. When I started raising money and, and doing real estate, my, my, my money was where my mouth was. Like I cashed mm. out my RRSPs. Yeah. You know, I the only investments I had was real estate, and it's because that's what I believed in. So I was all in on that. I yeah. was completely congruent, not for optic standpoint, because that's just where I was. Mm -hmm. um, the conversation about money I didn't find hard because I really felt that this is what people should do, as mm -hmm. opposed to what they were currently doing. So it wasn't. It wasn't like sales. It's like when I'm talking to people, I'm hoping they do it um, more for them mm -hmm. than I'm hoping for me in a sense. Okay. Yes, there's a win in it for me, no question, but I was hoping more for them. And if, if, if they chose not to, I didn't have a sense of, oh, I didn't close a sale or something. I guess I, I felt bad that they're not doing this because I know 10 years from now, if they would have, my feeling was yeah. they'd have been a lot better off. Right. So, so it was almost like you're, you're on a passion and a mission to help others and you get to help yourself, but you help them first. Absolutely. And so that really alleviated your fear was yeah. quite frankly, the more people you talk to, the more people you can help. Right. And the greater you gave yourself a sense of fulfillment. Right. I mean, I did have, in one aspect, I did have a sense of fear, and that is um, having the ability, wanted to make sure that, you know, I under-promise and over-deliver. Mm -hmm. And again, speaking honestly with people, yeah. you don't know in three years, five years, ten years, what exactly their return will be. Right. You don't know that. Anybody that says they know that is not telling the truth. So, well, And it's quite dangerous to actually guarantee anything. <laughs> <you> don't <laughs> it's want to, dangerous. Right. Right, yeah. so I, I had that inside of me yeah. a little bit. Like, I mean, I can maverick or, or go crazy like with my own money and take mm -hmm. gambles because if I, if I made an error, you know, it's just slap well, on my own head. You were young when you started. Right, <laughs> but, but, Younger. but with other people's money, it did create stress yeah. for me. The stress wasn't should you do real estate, should you buy stuff, that wasn't the stress. The stress mm -hmm. was self-imposed, always has been, always will be with me. Mm. So you demanded more from yourself than anybody would ever expect of you. Right. You think about it. Right. And I, in my head, to keep, 
you know, to keep on the positive side and the whole nine yards, I was went, things will go wrong yeah. at some point. And I go and I just, whatever it takes, I got to fix it. I just, I'll, 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 I'll fix it okay. and it'll all be good in the end. And that is, you know, how things go really. Nice, okay. The next conversation that a lot of people always have, and, and I've been talking with people across, whether whether they're just getting started, whether they're in a point where they maybe have accomplished, maybe they got a you know a portfolio of five, six, seven places, and they're looking to take it up to the twenty places, or mm -hmm. maybe they got twenty and they're looking to take it to a hundred. Mm -hmm. um, the question always comes out is uh, where, like where do you find your investors? Where do you position yourself to target? I often say you should actually talk about who your investors are first before you actually figure out where, but where did you find the majority? So two questions. Have you ever defined your ideal investor? Have you ever defined them? And the second question is, uh, where are those people? Where do you find those people? Um, yeah, I defined it. I did a rough, okay. I had a rough definition, I guess. First and foremost was family right off the start. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because, um, one, it's path of least, least resistance, and they know my personality. Yeah. But second is because I believe in real estate. If you're going to help, if you're to the core belief is you're helping people, mm -hmm. I mean, you want to help the people closest to you. Yes. So again, like everybody, a lot of people have heard, I've invested started with my parents. It 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 wasn't the get money from my parents so I can have some more real estate. It was to help my parents was the underlying thing. Um, that so was a governing why for you exactly. To help them, yeah. So. Um, like I'll use an example, one of my other criteria I thought of because I was thinking of scaling and duplicating. So I knew, like I had a goal early mm -hmm. on to be able to get to 100 properties. And I thought about like, okay, well that means if I have partners, I, I can't do partners that are only gonna buy one house with me because at the end of the day, I'm gonna have 100 partners and yeah. that's gonna be not manageable. So I wanted to have, I just had rough numbers in my head at the time, but I, if they weren't gonna buy like six or more or, mm -hmm. or spend X amount of money, then I, then I won't work with them. I might refer them. Yeah. Now, again, as I mentioned in the beginning, when it comes to family, I broke those rules for my sister, my brother, yeah. because that was intentional because it's for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that there's not a benefit for me anyways, yeah. but so I looked at scale because I, you know, I, I didn't want a hundred partners leave that wouldn't be manageable. Yeah. And how did I, how did I find them? Yeah, at dinner table on, on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I terrorized them to get them to do that because in my head, there's like no option. They're doing this because right. I wanted them to be successful. So, yeah. yeah, you wanted more for them. Sometimes you wanted more for them to be successful than they wanted for themselves. Yeah, in probably. Some, in some cases. Yeah. So, so guys, I think one of the, you know, so, and some people, and I'm going to ask, we're going to go down this, this trail of working with, fa with friend, uh, family because right. uh, some people go, geez, I won't approach family. But I think you framed it unbelievably well. Um, so, so if you're struggling, maybe the, the where to start first is start with your family. Like start with the immediate family, especially if you've, if mom and dad, and I'm sorry if you're a mom and dad and things like their children are watching this now, if mom and dad have owned the house for 20 years, it's probably free and clear. Yeah. That's, so there's probably a whole bunch of equity there. Um, and just having the conversation. The biggest problem sometimes is having mom and dad or Uncle Alan or all these people see you not as snotty nosed young kid and see, but see you as a business person. Right. In essence. So, how did you work with the family and friend? You just told them you're doing this and that's just a relationship you had? or No, you know, honestly, I, I, I talked to them for a while about what I was doing yeah. and I talked to them a while about why. And over time, I would send them information that I was receiving from different seminars and different mm -hmm. things that I went to. Yeah. And I would just supply the information and, and uh, as to the why, yeah. why I think it's the right thing, why this, why that. Um, I mean, again, with my parents, my parents were you know, normal middle class. They didn't have a pile of cash in the bank. Mm -hmm. their, their first investment money with me was basically cashing out RSPs, okay. which like they always credit me to the success I brought them. But I mean, how, how many people at the time, my, my parents were in their mid fifties, you cash out the RSPs. If, if Arlen doesn't perform, that's it. They're, that's hooped. A, they They're hooped. hooped. Wow, that's the point of no return. <laughs> right. So obviously they had trust in me. Yeah. And although they love me because I'm their son, <laughs> they're not going to give me everything if they think I'm going to lose it. I mean, that would be foolish, right? right? right. Then, uh, then the next step with them was, and I never asked for that, is they, just like you mentioned, their free and clear house, they, they, re, they put a line of credit on their house and they bought more. Mm -hmm. Now, this was a few years later as they seen what was going on with what we yeah. already had. So they went all in. So now it's worked out really well for them. Um, 
they always try to give me the credit. Yeah. And I always turn it because I'm going, I don't know too many people that would have had the guts to cast out RSPs at 55. Yeah. If it's gone, you're hooped. And then refi or, or they put a line on a on your on your home yeah. that's cl so, free and so clear. So they're actually tripling down and quadrupling down. Right, so down. They're, <laughs> they're all in on me. And, and that's where I come back to, I said, when you're talking about stress, I go, then then I do have stress yeah. on me yeah. because they're not putting any on me. Wow. It's all self-induced. Wow, and, and we're in your Quonset, which you have some, I've heard some legendary poker games here. <laughs> yeah. So they went all in and then all in on the all in. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I give them the credit because they did what most people wouldn't have the guts to do. Well, so that's what a brilliant way of framing that. Yeah. Everybody thinks that it's all oh, the real estate experts, no. the one, the one to make it, taking all the action and taking all the risks and the swashbuckler. But uh, here in your case, that was uh, it was it was their it was their vision in you, really. They believed in me. Yeah. You know whether they should have or not, we don't know. But the, wow. <laughs> but you know th th that that's the thing with family, right? If they know you since you're born, they know your character. Yeah. So you know if your family believes in you, they know you're a hard worker and this yeah. and that. Then it, it, it won't be that hard of a path. Yeah. I, I envision um, potentially if people watching this, there could be a whole bunch of presentations for, from kids and talking with the parents potentially down the road. And you know, and, and quite frankly, um, I think they probably should. If you actually can help mom and dad with certain things, um, you should probably do what you can to do that. It, it, it's a feel good thing. It's not yeah. even about money. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it was fun to write six figure checks mm -hmm. To the parents, I mean, I think it was more fun for me than it even for, for them in a sense. It just feels so good, right? Right. Wow. Well, I'm glad it's worked out for them. It's yep. been some ups and downs. It's been some challenges. Hey. And some some waves and cycles and bumps along the way. Absolutely. Right. But there's never been a com a waiver in the commitment to making it work. No. It just time. Sometimes the timeline changes. Right. Or maybe it was seven years or eleven years, and now it's turned into eighteen years and nineteen years. Maybe. Well, it's true. I mean, I remember I look back when I first invested with them. Like for the first five years, you know, basically the market was flat. Yeah. The vacancy was a little on the high side. Yeah. It, it looked like for the first five years we were doing this for no reason. Yeah, mortgage pay down. Yeah, yeah. mortgage pay down. That's about it. So mm -hmm. you're you're almost. I always had a belief in it. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but you're kind of second guessing because I go, we're no. We're no better off five years in now than we were when we started. Yeah. You know, it depends on your market timing. And I, that debt is still sitting there, too, right? Right. You know, and it depends on your timing with your different partners. I mean, I've had partners where they came in, you know, in the Edmonton area here at 05. So one year in, you look like a hero. Yeah, gravy train with biscuit wheels. Exactly. <laughs> right. you know, I mean, that's lucky, too, yeah. right? That's some luck. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, so. What was your first foray outside of family and friends? And, and how was that? So you've actually <laughs> used family, and then was the next wave into friends type of thing? No, or, or was not the next really. Out, out, what no. Was, how, did you, how did you make the transition from family to outside investors? You know, I, I always thought about things, and that's probably my sales background, yeah. is, um, is I, did, I, I don't like to have that feeling of being sold Mm -hmm. or let's have a meeting, yeah. I got this opportunity. Yeah. For most people, as soon as they hear that, they, they, they just cringe. Yeah. Like, you know, they're they thinking think Amway, Amway yeah. you know, or you're gonna put me in some MLM thing or, or, or this or that. So I just did it different. And I all I did is I was going to different seminars. It could be, you know, a rain, it could be in a bunch of different ones. And I would um, learn stuff yeah. and I would share stuff. Yeah. So I go out there, like I, you know, could be talking to someone there, you know, I, I'd always use the reference that I do real estate. Yeah. How was your weekend? I guess, you know, well, last week it was a little busy. I went and looked at a couple houses and uh, I can put an offer on one. And then if they ask a question, off we go. If they don't have a question, if they don't ask a question, I'm, I stop. Right. You know, I don't keep going that, down that trail. But I remember when I early started, I didn't know much about real estate. My number one thing was helping giving people advice of what to do on their home renewal. Because I'd learned this stuff. Ah. So that was my number. I mean, I didn't know much then. Yeah. That's, that's one thing I didn't know. <laughs> so I would say, you know, it looks like, you know, you should do a variable, you know, five-year variable. You should be able to get a point off. I know that. Yeah. Go to a broker, do this, do that. Or I would say, you know, maybe you want to lock in. So I would just give that advice. And they'd say, then, of course, when I give the advice, I'd say, well, how do you know that? Then I explain it. The next thing you know, you're off onto an investment conversation. Or maybe you're not. Right. But I just went out there to consult and then 
some stuff would just come my way. That's how it would work. So I never met people, did meetings to invest with me. I never did that. Wow. So we're going to get into this in this next uh, segment. We're going to get into your presentation. You, I think more than anybody I know, uh, when you did some stage presentation, you, you changed the way people made presentations to investors. <laughs> you fundamentally changed it. Right. And I remember seeing it. I just looked at it and after I saw it go, I can do that. Yeah. Anybody can do that. Yeah. And I think you just gave and instilled the confidence into an entire generation of people that they can go and have a conversation, not a presentation, right. a conversation right. about it. So that's what we're going to get into this next segment. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit about some objections and answering those kind of things. And okay. let's, let's see how let's, 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 let's talk with the master here and oh, see geez. how he handles them all. <laughs> right. So we'll be right back guys. Hey, so what do you think? Holy moly, we're actually just getting warmed up. So if you've watched this first part, make sure you dive directly into part two, or if you're watching this as it is first being launched, you may actually have to wait a few days. But Arlen and I went deep and we've actually just scratched the surface. So make sure you dive in and watch all five parts of this amazing series. Now remember, as we talked about at the very beginning, you need two critical success elements. You need the fortitude to be able to stick it out long term and you need access to capital and that's what we're bringing to you in this upcoming video so make sure you jump into the next one right away do it now i hope you enjoy part two of this video series and we'll talk to you very soon bye for now